Welcome to section 3.5, derivatives for trigonometric functions. In the future, I will just say trig functions for short. In part one, we're going to simply learn the rules, which are just the derivative rules for the six trig functions. And then the majority of this video will be spent doing examples. Here are the six rules for our six trig functions. So for example, the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. If you note, half of them are negative. Which trig functions have negative derivatives? The ones that start with co. Cosine, cosecant, and cotangent all have negative derivatives. If it doesn't start with a co, like sine, tan, and secant, then it's not a negative derivative. So that's something that can help you. This sheet over here is something that I posted in today's folder. And it's a, it's a different um, derivative like reference sheet, and I think it's even better. I didn't want to give it to you initially because it's way more over overwhelming, I think, before we kind of know what we're doing. But the really cool thing is that if you look on it, you can explore a lot of these basic properties. That's totally fine. Um, derivative definition we've done. Product, quotient rule, power rule. We'll get to the chain rule soon. Here are common derivatives. And if you notice, here are some common derivatives. And they're the trig derivatives, which is pretty cool. It also deals with limits as well, but this is a great reference sheet. If you can't print it, at least have it easily accessible on your computer for when you're working with calculus. Okay, let's get into some examples. Make sure that you have your reference sheet readily available to you and these new rules here. In these first two examples, we're simply going to find the derivative of each one of these functions. So we do want to find dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. In number one, y is a function that has three terms. And so using the sum or difference rule, we just simply find the derivative of each term. So the derivative of y is dy dx. The derivative of one is zero, so I'm not going to write anything. The derivative of x squared using the power rule is 2x to the first, or just 2x. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Since this is negative cosine, the derivative of that would be negative negative sine, which is just plus sine of x. We could have really any variable in here. With trig functions, the most common like input to a trig function is just x, like usual, or theta. In this video, I will not be using theta yet, but that's a common input for angles. Okay, so we have found the first derivative. Number two, we have y equals 3x plus x tan x. All right, we again are going to use our sum rule, meaning we're gonna take the derivative of this term and then the derivative of this term separately since they're separated by a plus sign. So dy dx means I'm about to take the derivative. The derivative of three x is three. Then this next term right here is interesting because it's a product. It's a product because um, each of the factors in that product, x and tan of x, have the variable in it. You could argue that 3x, mathematically, is also a product. You are correct. However, we don't need to use the product rule on it, even though we could, and still get the same answer of 3, because both of the factors, 3 and x, do not each have a variable in them. So even though this yes is mathematically a product, we don't need to use the product rule. Here, this is also a product, but we do need to use the product rule because each of the two factors, x and tan x, each have a variable in it. So that is my long-winded way of saying they're both products, but we need to use the product rule here when taking the derivative and not here. So let's take our product rule. Recall that the product rule is um, u v prime plus v u prime. So that's our product rule. And so we want to recognize what u and u prime are, and then v and v prime. So u will be x, and v will be tan x. 
then u prime is 1. And v prime, using what we just learned, the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. Note that I'm writing the squared after the secant and not after the x because the secant is squared, not the input of x. All right, then following the tangent rule, I will move down here. So our derivative will continue to be plus. So we'll do, actually I'll give myself a little more room here because it'll be a little longer. Our derivative will be plus uv prime first, so x times secant squared x plus vu prime, which is tan x times one, so just tan x. So our entire derivative is three plus x secant squared x plus tan x. So really the only new thing that we've learned so far are those six new derivative rules. Everything else is just we're building on what we already know about derivatives such as the product rule and the power rule and the sum and difference rules. These next two examples have us doing the same thing. If you look in example three, we have two terms, both of which, which are uh, fractions, and we could use the quotient rule on both of them. We will have to use the quotient rule here because we don't yet know enough about rearranging this to use the uh, power rule. However, we can arrange this in order to use the power rule like we already know. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm not going to do any calculus yet, not mess with this first term. But I'm going to rewrite the second term as x to the negative 1. All right, we haven't done any calculus yet, so here's what we'll do now. I will perform the quotient rule in white because we need to do the quotient rule for this guy right here. All right, so the quotient rule is low times d high. So if we call this u over v, it's low times d high minus high times d low all over low squared. So our u value here is 4 and our v value is cosine of x. So we have u is 4 and v is cosine of x. So then u prime would actually be 0 and v prime, the derivative of cosine, is negative sine. So it would be negative sine of x. So doing the quotient rule We'd have v times u prime, which is cosine x times 0. So this term goes to 0, so I'm not going to write anything. Then a minus sign, then u times v prime. So u times v prime, it looks like we're taking 4 times a negative sine of x, so that'll, that'll turn that negative into a positive there instead. It'll be 4 sine of x. So I don't even need to put a plus because we assume positivity, all over v squared, so it's cosine squared of x. Note where I'm putting the 2 when we're squaring a trig function. It goes after the trig function and before the input. Okay, so we've gotten that part so far. So we've taken the derivative of the first term, so dy dx of that first term is right there. Then we will need to take the derivative of the second term, which is not quite as bad, and we'll use the power rule, bring that negative one out front, it'll turn to a plus, and raise this to one less. One less than negative one is negative two. x to the negative second is one over x to the positive second, one over x squared. Now, can this get simplified? Yes. Let's actually take a look at that. Let's see what four sine of x over cosine squared means. It, cosine squared means cosine times cosine. So I'm just rewriting this bottom piece here. Just want to see if we can simplify this. Now, what is sine over cosine? Sine over cosine is tangent. So we can rewrite this as 4 tangent and then we still have tangent of x, and then we still have like a 1 over cosine. So what I've done here is this piece is the 4 tangent. What is this piece here, this 1 over cosine? What is the reciprocal of cosine? 
it is secant. So that's how we can simplify that part. So our final dy dx can be written as 4 tangent x secant x plus 1 over x squared. If any of that rewriting here in the light blue got to you a little bit and you were confused, I recommend looking back to the beginning of our calculus playlist and taking a look at the prerequisites for calculus when we talk about trig functions. On to number four here in yellow, we can see that number four, I should have written y equals. So this is y equals x squared sine of x. And in order to take the derivative, we realize that this is in fact a product where both of the factors in this product do have a variable in it. So we do need to use the product rule. So once again, we need to identify u and v. So our product rule is u times v prime plus v times u prime. So then identifying both of those, we'll identify that u is x squared and v is the sine of x. That means that u prime is 2x using the power rule and v prime, the derivative of sine is cosine. All right, then we can go ahead and use the power rule up here. So u times v prime will have x squared times cosine x. Now, just in general, anytime you multiply some polynomial by a trig function, you wanna write the trig function last. And I'll show you why. When we write the trig function last, this is the correct way to write the uv prime. This would be not the correct way. I don't even want to put an x there. X's are confusing. I'll put an unhappy face. If we wrote it this way, that's confusing of what we're taking the cosine of. Are we taking the cosine of x times x squared? Are we, are we you know, what are we doing here? So that's a little bit confusing. So in general, when you are multiplying two things together and one of them is a trig function, write the trig function um, last. Okay, so we just did our uv prime, then we need to add our vu prime onto it, which is sine x times 2x. So I'm gonna write that as 2x times sine x, following that rule we just said. So plus 2x times the sine of x. And that was taking the derivative dy dx. Now, could we simplify this at all if we are ever asked to factor or set something to zero? Sure. If you are asked to just find the derivative, you're done, which we are. I do want to go one step further and just say that we are eventually going to find horizontal tangents, have to solve for zero, all that fun stuff. So we can factor this. The way that we'd factor this is we'd find any common factors. And in that case, both of these terms, these two terms, have an x. This x is not for sale because it's inside the cosine and the sine functions, but this x is for sale and so is this one. So we can pull those x's out front because they have them in common. And what are we left with in the first term? We're left with one x left over of those x squareds and the cosine x. So we'd have x cosine x plus what are we left with in the second term? Two sine x. So this is extra for now but we will eventually be using the um, skill of factoring. In number five, we wanna find the equations for the tangent lines and the normal line to this curve, y equals root two times cosine x at the point pi over four, one. I did put our little handy unit circle here because, you know, we'll probably need it. So to write a tangent line, to write any line, we need two things. We need a point, got it, and a slope don't quite got it. In order to find the slope in calculus world, we need to find the derivative at our x value. So let's first find the derivative here of our function. So to find the derivative, we want to do dy dx, and we're taking dy dx of this y, you know, of our function up here. So the root two is just a, you know, coefficient out in front, no biggie, so it's going to stay in our derivative. Then the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. 
So to make it not look like minus sine of x, they're still being multiplied. I'm going to do times minus sine of x. Now to, to clean this up a little bit, I just bring that minus sign all the way out in front. So it's negative root 2 sine of x. Again, writing the trig function last always when you have things being multiplied. Awesome. So that is our derivative function. Now we need to find the derivative or the slope when x is pi over 4. So to find it at pi over 4, we are going to evaluate our derivative or slope function when x is pi over 4. And that means negative root 2 times the sine of pi over 4. And if you don't quite remember what the sine of pi over 4 is, we can take a look-see-loo. And pi over 4 is right here in quadrant 1. Sine is the y value at any point. So the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So we can replace the sine of pi over 4 with root 2 over 2. When we multiply, what is negative root 2 times positive root 2? That is negative 1 all over 2. So our slope is 1 half. This is our slope. And this is our point. Both of them, not just pointing to the y. So we have our point and our slope. Sounds like it's time for a little point-slope fun. I mean form. Writing out point-slope form will give us y minus 1, our y-coordinate, right here, equals m negative 1 half times x minus our x-coordinate over here, pi over 4. And then doing a little, you know, having a little fun with it. So we'll distribute the negative 1 half, so negative 1 half x plus, let's see, multiplying across with fractions, negative 1. Oh, we know it's plus already. Okay, so 1 times pi, pi, over 2 times 4, 8. So pi over 8. And we still add y minus 1 over here. So we're going to add 1. And what is adding 1 in an eighths world? It's adding 8 over 8. So we'll have y equals negative 1 half x plus, this is kind of weird, so we add our numerator, so it's pi plus 8 over 8. That's a little weird. Honestly, if you wanted to keep it here, let's say we wanted to just keep this here, but we wanted to solve for y, we could simply add 1 to both sides. Boom. So if you added that 1 and took it away here, this could very much easily be your your line. If you did not want to go through and write it in slope intercept form or um yeah, slope intercept form here, you could easily have just left it like this. That's this is probably a lot simpler than doing this weird fraction thing here with pi. So that is the equation of our tangent line when x is pi over 4. How about the normal line? So we did the tangent. Let's explore the normal line now. The normal line, as we recall, is perpendicular to the tangent line, meaning the normal line is going to have a slope that is the opposite reciprocal of the slope of the tangent line. Therefore, since negative 1 over 2 was the slope of the tangent line, m sub tan, m sub normal, would be the opposite reciprocal of negative 1 half, which would be 2. So we still have a slope, and we still have a point. So let's do the normal line. We'd have y minus 1, same point, equals the only thing that changed, our slope, times x minus pi over 4, still our x value. And to make this a lot simpler, what I'm going to do is just add the 1 to both sides, just like I did up top. And we do not need to do all that crazy distributing and all that. So that is completely fine right there. So this would be the normal line equation. Again, really the only new information in this entire problem was just how to find dy dx because a cosine was thrown in. That's all. 
All of the rest of the ideas, tangent line, normal line, were former calculus ideas uh, earlier in the year, and point-slope form was an idea that was pre-calculus, so was the unit circle. All right, if you are not having fun yet, which, I mean, I highly doubt that, but if you're not, this problem will sure to get you going. Number six says, a body is moving in simple harmonic motion. That's like back and forth or up or down. It's something that repeats over and over. And we're given a position function, f of t. It is defined with very common like harmonic motion functions, which are sine and cosine, because their graphs just look like this over and over. We are told that s is measured in meters, t in seconds. What we want to do is find the body's velocity, speed, and acceleration at time t, meaning find those three different functions. We have learned in section 3.4 that in order to find velocity, we have to take the derivative of position. So in order to find velocity, which we will call v of t, we actually have to take the derivative of the position function. I'm actually going to write this in a separate order so we can see v of t closer to the function. So I'm going to write it as the derivative of position, so f prime of t, is the velocity function. That means we need to take the derivative of our position function to find velocity. The derivative of each one of these terms, the first term would be the derivative of 2 sine of t, the derivative of sine is cosine, so the derivative of 2 sine of t would be 2 cosine t. The derivative of 3 cosine t would be minus 3 sine t, since the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So now we found velocity. Now velocity and speed are related, and that sometimes they're really the exact same thing. Speed is only and always positive. Velocity can sometimes be negative because velocity also tells us the direction in which we're traveling. Speed is just telling us the speed, how fast we're going. It doesn't care which direction we're moving. So speed is the absolute value of velocity. So in order to take, in order to find speed, we need to take the absolute value of velocity, and that is our speed function, which I will call s of t. And that simply means put absolute value bars around your velocity function. There we go. We have now found the speed function. It is the absolute value of velocity. In order to find acceleration, what we need to do is take the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of position. So to take the derivative of velocity, we'll do that. V prime of t is acceleration, a of t. And so what we're doing is taking the derivative of velocity, velocity is right here, and right here if you just ignore the absolute value bars. So the derivative of 2 cosine t would be negative 2 sine of t, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and I'm just writing it in a more mathematically pleasing way with the negative out front. Then we take the derivative of this next term, the derivative of negative 3 sine of t would be minus 3 cosine t. The derivative of sine is cosine, we're not changing the negative out front here. So we have now found all three, velocity, speed, and acceleration functions, just from one initial position function. Sine and cosine are pretty cool in that they're pretty repetitive if you see. Um, the patterns here, just the negatives and positives will change each time we take a derivative. The next part, part b, we want to find the body's velocity, speed, and acceleration when t is pi over 4. What I've done is sort of color-coded this a little bit. I realize all of this is kind of in one dark blue color. So let's first focus on the body's velocity when time is pi over 4. Velocity will be done in this light blue here, and this is our velocity function. So we'll have v of pi over 4, and then anywhere there's a t, we'll just plug in pi over 4. So 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 minus 3 times the sine of pi over 4. Now, on our unit circle, if you are still referencing it, 
pi over 4 is the coordinate point root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Therefore, the cosine and the sine are both root 2 over 2, since cosine is the x value and sine is the y value. So the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and the sine of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. These twos cancel. We're left with a root 2 minus 3 root 2 over 2. Now, depending on how much you really care to cancel the rest of this, this is fine. If you're asked to sort of like get a decimal approximation, then you can totally use your calculator, but this is completely fine for now. The next thing that we want to do is find the speed. And what the speed will be is simply the absolute value of velocity at pi over 4. So interestingly enough, all we have to do for this one, we already found the velocity there. So it's just going to be the absolute value of what we got. Again, if you would like to plug that into your calculator, feel free. And then the last one is the acceleration at pi over 4. So we're going to do negative 2 times the sine at pi over 4. So I'm plugging into the acceleration function right here. Minus 3 times the cosine of pi over 4. So once again, both of these values are root 2 over 2. Oops, minus 3 times root 2 over 2. Those cancel. So we'll have negative root 2 minus 3 halves root 2. Yes, that could get cleaned up a bit algebraically, but for now, that is perfectly fine. Again, the quick moral of the story is that all we've learned are six new derivative rules, the trig rules, and we have simply been doing a lot of the same stuff that we've already been doing, finding the equation of tangent and normal lines, being able to find the derivatives using power, product, quotient rules, as well as a few other rules, and understanding the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration.